Good morning. Once again, it's good to be with you for 7 for 7. I am so excited in the Lord. Amen. You know, we've been talking about how the Lord would make us a quickening spirit. Amen. Yes. Let's go to the song. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are grateful as your people. We're grateful for who you are and what yes, you're doing. Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you continue to minister to our souls. We ask, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would quicken us and draw us ever closer to you, allowing us, God, to walk in the revelation of who you are and what yes. you've done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go with me this morning to Matthew, the 16th chapter and the 13th verse. Okay. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Amen. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. So, you know what? He was Jesus was helping him to understand, if you will, that it is imperative Amen. that we just not operate off of education. Amen. In the world system, we need education. And, and, and when it comes to biblical things, we need to eat the word. We need to study the word. Jesus. But it's not from the Come point on. of education. You see, see we, need we need the revelation. Amen. And that's what was happening. The other disciples, when he said, whom does, do, do they say that I am? They were pulling off of what they knew, off of their education. Come and on. they said, you know, Jesus, you're this, you're that. And when it came, he said, whom do you say? Yeah. Talking to the other disciples. The rest of them, other than Peter, said nothing because they did not have the revelation. And we must have the revelation that he is. Amen. Come on. Who, that he is our Lord, that he is our Savior, that he is, if you will, the son that came, if you will, that he is, if you will, um, the the second part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the three Amen. in one, that he is, if you will, the one that makes a way out of no way for us. Amen. Because, you know, it is, is, it is God's desire that we press. Amen. That we press in, that we get to know him so that he can reveal different things to us. You know, sometimes we can pick up the word of God and it's right there in our face and we read it and we read it and we read it and you don't understand it. We need to ask God to reveal unto us the word that is written in the book. Amen. Not just reveal it to us, but help us to apply it to our life so that we might walk it out on a daily basis. We might be prepared for what God has for us. You know, you know, it's, it's in that revelation that we come to the place because sometimes we're too busy trying to figure out only what God can, can work, work out. out. Come on, and if it. we let God work it out, then we're walking in a revelation, yes. if you will, that no matter what happens, God's going to make it work for yes, my good. No will. matter what happens, I can put my trust in God. Just like Abraham, when he left the Ur of Chaldees, when God told him to go look for a place, if you will, a promised land, Come if on. you will, he went, if you will, looking for this place, but it was not something that he could understand naturally. Yes. But in Romans, the fourth chapter, 17th verse, it says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many, many nations, nations, before whom he believed, even mm -hmm. God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not yes. as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall th thy seed be. Amen. Guess what? Abraham was not weak in faith, Come right? On. In the end. But in the process, Come on. he was soggy, he was wishy-washy, right? Just like us. But he finally got to the place that he could walk in the true revelation. Come on. You know, um, one minute he was walking in the spirit, then one yes, minute he was walking, he was walking in, the in the flesh. flesh. When... I, I say it this way. Abraham had four cries. And the four cries of Abraham is is this. When he left his family, when he left the Earl Chaldees, Come if on. you will, he left everyone behind. That was a cry because he had to make a decision and he yes. chose to do the Lord's way. Then he had to give up Lot. And Lot was a veil. As long as Lot was in his life, he mm. couldn't see the things of That's God. Right. Guess what? There are people in your life. As long as they're in your life or whenever they're around, you cannot see or hear what God is Come doing. On, say that. Then he had to leave, if you will, or get rid of Ishmael, right? Ishmael was a product of the flesh. Yeah. Some of us is trying to hold on to the things that our flesh has produced, 
rather than making it submit, Come on. if you will. If, if, if he would go. have submitted to the <laughs> spirit, then, then, then it would be right. But, but we need to not produce these things in the flesh if we, you know, and, 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 and then those things that are, make them submit to the word of God, make Amen. them submit to the spirit. And then he thought that he'd had it all in, together when he got Isaac, right? But then God said, I want him too. And he had to take him and sacrifice him. And at this point in time, he said to Sarah, he said to the young men, I and the lad will be back. Amen. This man was sold out. This man had a revelation that no matter what, God's going to make it work. No matter what, God's got me. And if my, my son dies today, God will do something, resurrect him or something. But I'm trusting God. I'm going with him all the way. Amen. Because he had the faith when he said uh, uh, the, word, the word of God in Romans where it says, speak those things which aren't as though they are. He knew what God had told him to do. And he, uh, like Pastor Ron said, he told Sarah, I and the lad will be back. And that was speaking faith right there. Amen. He was believing that whatever happens, we will be back. Things will be okay. And we have to do the same thing in our life. You know what? Whatever happens, guess what? We will be okay. You know, I have told people since the beginning of this pandemic, I don't care what goes on. If everything catches on fire around us and everything is blown up and, and, and everything is falling apart, I'm going to be okay because God's word promises that he was going to take care of me. I know that there's a hedge of protection around me. And if God said it, I have to believe it and stand on it. And so I speak it while in faith, trusting, knowing that God is my shield. He is my protector. He has me covered. He will take care of me. And so when we get to spend time with God and we allow him to reveal the things unto us that are in his word, amen, it, can, it makes a difference. It strengthens your faith. It strengthens your belief system. And Abraham was not weak or did he stagger at the promise of unbelief, in unbelief, because he knew that God had made him a promise and that what God had promised would be good. Amen. The man came to the revelation, if you will, when he received the word of God. And when he recognized that his body was dead, that Sarah's body, body was, was dead, dead. Come on. he said, look, there ain't no way that, happened, that this could happen except it be God. Guess what? Some of you are in that place right now. You need God to move. Some of you are praying, and you need God to do something. And, and guess what? Stop trying to figure out only what well, God, God can, can work, work out. out. Trust on. him, and he'll give you a revelation. Just do what he said. We'll see you next time. At 7 for 7. Have a blessed weekend.